Good evening. Creed. Welcome to the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight we invite you to listen to Dark Venture. Tonight's Venture in the Dark stars William Conrad in Hideout. I just talked to the doc, Sam. Yeah? And what did he tell you, Inspector? Did he tell you to come in here and hold my hand? He told me you were dying. <laughs> Smart fellow, that doc. Education is a wonderful thing. How about telling me what happened? Sure, why not? At least you'll be company. Too bad I can't offer you a shot. <laughs> Take it easy, kid. Look, don't act like a professional mourner crying your eyes out at four bits an hour. I don't feel so bad about dying as I thought. At least I'm fooling the old lady with the cards. Yeah, that time with the lady. That was the second time cards really were important in my life. The first time was that night of the big poker game. Till that night, I was just another tin horn floating around town, always ready to latch onto a quick buck. Matter of fact, I was leaving my room to go downstairs and buy a dope sheet for the next day's races when the phone started ringing. Yeah? Sam, this is Phil Collins. Oh, yeah, Mr. Collins. Look, you, uh, want to make a few bucks? Why, sure, why not? Come on over to room 612 at the Palace Hotel. I'm having a little poker game. Well, I'm afraid you got the wrong guy. I, I don't have the money to play in your league, Mr. Collins. You said anything about playing. We need a boy to run out for sandwiches and keep his eye open for cops. You want the job? Okay. Get over here right away. And, uh, say, just in case, you better bring a gun. <laughs> I could use the dough all right, but the main reason I went was to watch one of Phil Collins' famous poker games. They were the talk of the whole town. Most of the big-shot gamblers and politicians played. There was nothing for 50,000 bucks to change hands in one night. There were three other players besides Collins, but one of them, Mike Barnes, the political big-shot, had a run of tough luck. And around midnight, he left to go across town to his apartment for more money. The three others just sat there with nothing to do. Uh, Sam... Yeah, Mr. Collins? Look, we can't play with three hands. How about you sitting in till Mike gets back? Oh, I, I only got uh, 40 bucks to my name. All right, so we'll cut the stakes down to a five-buck limit. Okay, boys? Yeah. We don't want to sit here like dopes. Come on, sit down. Well, I, I, I don't know. 40 bucks don't mean nothing to you guys, but to me... Sit down. We'll give you back what you lose. <laughs> So I sat on, me with 40 bucks and these other guys with maybe 90 grand in front of them. My collar felt tight and I couldn't breathe so good. And when Phil dealt out the cards, my fingers started shaking. What's the matter, Sam? Still worried about that 40 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I hit a streak of crazy luck. Three straight hands I won. And by the time Mike Barnes came back, I had 300 bucks in front of me. Ah, uh, sit down, Mike. Sam was just keeping your seat warm. Okay, Sam, now fold all that big money up nice and go back to the door. Look, uh, there's room at the table for another hand. Uh, how about letting me play a while longer? I, I feel kind of lucky. You look kind of sick. <laughs> go on back to the door, Sam. Ain't that just like a tin horn? Makes a couple of bucks and figures he's going to clean us up. A punk like this needs a lesson. Oh, no, you guys got me wrong. Let's I didn't... make room for it. Huh? Sure. Let's see how long that 300 bucks will last. My deal. Oh, and Sam, uh, we go back to no limit. Okay. And Sam, uh, wipe the sweat off your hands. You'll get the cards all wet. After that, I won five hands in a row. Every card I drew was right. Every bet I made was right. In three hours, I won more than 20,000 bucks. And one night, my whole life was changing. I didn't even think about the cards anymore. I was kind of imagining how things were going to be from now on. And then, right while I was dreaming about all the swell things that were going to happen to me, that good little fairy that had been waving that wand over my head must have got a little sleepy and turned in. What have you got, Sam? Two pairs? Hmm, not good enough. Three jacks. Well, that's more like it. <laughs> Just like that, my luck changed. 
One minute sitting on top of the world, and the next minute sliding down the chute. Back high straight. And beat you, Sam. Three deuces. My part. What happened to your luck, Sammy? In the first half hour, I lost 7,000 bucks. In the second half hour, I started betting crazy, trying to win back the 7,000. And I lost 10,000 more. Quit. Quit while you're still a few thousand ahead. I kept telling myself that over and over again, but I couldn't quit. And by 3 o'clock in the morning, I was flat busted. Well, Sammy, what happened to all that dough? You saw what happened to you it. You should have just watched the door like we told you. <laughs> <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Hey, hey, slow down. What's so funny? You weren't laughing a couple of hours ago. I told you to slow down. I know why you saw. You didn't keep your promise, Phil. What do you mean? You said if he lost his 40 bucks, you'd give it back to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did it then. <laughs> <laughs> and listening to him laugh, looking at the fat, ugly faces, something happened to me. It was like someone pulling a switch in my brain. I felt all the blood rush into my head. Without even thinking about it, I took the gun I brought along. Hey, what are you doing with that gun? I'm taking the money I won. You what? Sit where you are, all of you. Mm. And I'm taking this dough. Yeah, it's mine, mine. Mike, I told you to sit where you are. You're not taking that money. Look, I'm telling you. I'm taking the gun away from you. And then I'm going to kick your teeth. In. I tell you, stay where you are. All right, then. <laughs> now, does anyone else want to stop me? No. Take the money and start running. But while you're running, keep remembering who you just shot. Mike Barnes, one of the biggest guys in this town. Yeah, start running. But don't take any bets on how far you'll get. Yeah, I started running all right. In half an hour, I was on a plane headed for Chicago. I went out to the south side and looked up an old friend, Dave Jordan. Dave ran a little rooming house on 35th Street where a guy could bury himself and no questions asked. Dave remembered me the second he opened the door. Sam Gordon, come on in. See by the papers, you're famous. Yeah. You, you got a room, Dave? I think so. But the rent's pretty high. How high? A hundred bucks a day. You share the bath. I didn't stick my nose out of that room for a month. But after a while, it started getting me, being cooped up all the time. And three nights ago, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I decided it was all right to go for a little walk. I walked around for maybe half an hour, just breathing in the fresh air. I'd left my money back in the room just to make sure that I wouldn't weaken and go in some bar. And then... On my way back, I saw this little side street carnival, and I couldn't resist going over to it and walking down the little midway. It was almost midnight, and there weren't many people around, but it sure felt good just seeing the lights again. How about trying your luck with a dot, buddy? Treat with that. Huh? Oh, no, thanks. Come on over and look at the prizes you can win. I got some dandies. No, I ain't interested. You would be if you came over. What? What do you want? The town. I don't care if you throw the dots or not. I just work here. I only wanted to put you wise. Put me wise to what? You must be hot. What do you mean? Ever since you came on the midway, that cop's been following you. I turned quick, and there he was. Just a plain cop, not 20 feet away. Looking as though he couldn't decide about me. I could almost see him thumbing through his mind, trying to figure where he'd seen my face before. I started down the midway, trying to keep from running. And he called after me. Hey, fellow, wait. I want to talk to you. I kept on going, I actually, but I didn't know he was calling me. A small crowd came out of one of the side shows, and I mingled with it. And then I saw a little shack, and the door had a little sign on it. Welcome. Yeah, that was for me. You have come for a reading? Huh? You have come to Madame Zara for a reading? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, a reading. Come with me into my inner room. Okay, okay. Right through this great Sit down here. Uh -huh. It is quiet here and dark. The mind can be at rest. Yeah, yeah, it's swelling here. Yeah. You want just a reading of the cards? 
Or are you in need of special counseling? No, no, just a card reading. That'll be okay. She sure had a good act that day. First she had me shuffle the cards and then cut them three times toward me. And she started spreading them face up on the little table. And then all of a sudden she stopped and I saw her look up at me quickly. These cards, I hate them. They have been spiteful all day. Here, we will use this deck. She broke open a new deck and then things seemed to go right. She told me all the good things that were going to happen to me. A new business venture, a trip across water, a letter with money in it. And when she was through... These cards have been very favorable for you. You are going to have a good year. That will be three dollars. Three dollars, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, say, I, I I didn't bring any money out with me. I, I left it in my room, but don't worry, I'll pay you. You think you are going to get away with this one? Madam Zara, are you inside? Cop. Now look, lady, I'm holding a gun in my hand. Madam Zara! What is it? Did you see a young, heavy set guy in a black top coat come by this way in the last 15 minutes? I'm warning you. Why, why, why no, I have been back here giving this, giving this lady a reading. Lady, huh? Okay, he must be around here somewhere. He is gone. Now get out of here. Is there a back entrance to the shack? Yes, right through here. Okay. But first I am going to tell you what I really saw in those cards I threw away. Uh, save it for the yokels. I ain't interested. Why, it came up and it must be the truth. Shut up and tell me how to get out of here. You are going to die. But... What? Within three days you will be killed by a man with white hair. <laughs> It was so funny, I didn't know whether to bust out laughing or bust the old dame over the head. Yeah, she had it all figured out, even to the color of the guy's hair. I was going to be killed by a guy with white hair. <laughs> well, I got out through the back and hurried to my rooming house. Dave was waiting for me. You got a long distance call a while ago. What? Nobody knows I'm here. Operator asked for Sam Gordon. Yeah, better not mess around with this. What difference does it make? She knows you're here. She said for you to call as soon as you got in. Operator 23. Go on, use the hall phone. Maybe it's a friend. I called Operator 23, and she had a long-distance call for me, all right? In New York. But nobody knew I was here. What was going on? It took her a couple of minutes to complete the call, and I just stood there trying to figure out who it could be. Finally, she said she had my party. Hello, Sammy. Collins. I called you before. You were out. With all those cops looking for you, that's not very smart. What do you want? You didn't think I'd forgotten about you, did you, Sammy? How did you know I was here? I got ways of finding out. The reason I phoned, I've arranged for a guy to pay a little call on you. To kind of settle things, you know? Yeah? Maybe you think I'm going to stay here and wait for your guy. No. That's why I called you. I know you'll start running. I want you to run. A man sweats when he runs, Sammy. And I like to think of you sweating. Of course, you could go to the cops. But then that wouldn't be so good either, would it? Look, if you think I'm going to listen to you Wait with a it... second. Don't hang up yet. I want to tell you something about the guy I hired to kill you. Kill me? You've heard of him. Yeah, he's really got a reputation for doing a job. Look, I, I'm hanging up, so save your breath. Let me tell you his name. Whitey Burke. Whitey? The fortune teller. phone and went down the hall to Dave's room. You got your call all right? Dave, you ever heard of a fellow named Whitey Burke? Yeah, I've heard of him. Well, you know most everything, so you might as well know this. That call was from Phil Collins in New York. He hired this Whitey Burke to, to kill me. Yeah? And if I were you, I'd run, not walk to the nearest police station. What are you talking about? If the cops get me, it means the chair. 
And what do you think it means if this Whitey gets you? Well, I'll take my chances. Suit yourself, but I want you out of here in ten minutes. Dave, I... I'm not turning this place into a shooting gallery. But look, how will I know him when I see him? What does he look like? I don't know. All I know is once Whitey Burke gets on to a guy... Okay, that's... okay, but give me time to find another hideout. Now that the cops have seen me, they'll be looking for me all over the city. That's your worry. Get out. I could see there was no use arguing with Dave. I went upstairs and started packing. Within three days, you will be killed by a man with white hair. I checked my gun, slid it into my overcoat pocket. I could feel my heart going a mile a minute. Within three days, you will be killed by a man with white hair. I had to stop thinking about that. I had to... Hey, police sirens. Dave was in the hall. You better get out of here quick. Squad car's out in the street. But how? Through the window. Hurry. I ran back into my room and across to the window. It's only a ten-foot drop to the rear alley. I dropped the suitcase with the money to the ground, and then I lowered myself down. And as I straightened up, I saw someone standing in the shadows. He was walking toward me. I couldn't see much of him in the darkness. What do you want? Here's Collins. Something to look you up. Let's take a walk. I couldn't move. It was like looking into the eyes of a snake. And then finally the spell broke. I crouched down and started running toward him. I caught him by surprise and he fell to the ground. I sprinted down the alley. I'd left the money. But I was safe. But for how long... I'll never forget that night. There seemed to be a cop on every corner, and they were all looking for me. But they weren't alone. Whitey was looking for me, too, and he'd almost got me. I was going nuts trying to figure out what to do. I couldn't go back to Dave's. There was nobody else in Chicago I knew. I started walking the streets, ducking into doorways every time a siren sounded. So tired, every bone in my body ached. When I was ready to just give up and fall on the street, I saw this old deserted house. Across the front was a big sign I could read by the dim light of the street lamp. This property condemned. I staggered inside and dropped to the floor into a deep sleep. When I woke up, I could see the sky was turning gray. It was morning. Then I smelled tobacco smoke and I realized somebody was beside me. Pretty good place to hide out, eh? I turned to the voice. The man was crouched on one knee looking at me. He wasn't wearing a hat. And his hair was white as snow. Yeah, in the five years I've been on a bum, I've used this old house lots of times. <sighs> Why, uh, what's the matter? Uh, I thought you were somebody else. Want to smoke? I got to make you. No, no, I, I got to be going. This is a good day to stay off the street. Well, what do you mean? Too many cops. They got this whole neighborhood roped off trying to find the guy who killed that big shot back east. Is that right? Sure. Look at this newspaper I picked up on the street. Look at this headline. Killer trapped on south side. See, here's the map of the neighborhood right here on page two. All this dark part is where the cops have already searched. Yeah. And this white part's where we are, where they still have to search. Not much white part left. Is there, Sam? No, not much. Hey, how come you know my name? You look pretty bad, but there's still a resemblance with his picture. What do you think you're going to do about it? Nothing. I don't love cops. That's why I say you better stay right here. And what about eating? I'm so hungry my stomach hurts. You got any money? I can go out and buy something. All right. I got a little change. Now, let's see. A couple of quarters. About a buck altogether. Okay. I'll bring back some food. If the cops should start searching this house, there's plenty of room to hide. This is an old four-story flat. All right. But you better not try any double cross. Well, what makes you think I will? Maybe it's your white hair. Huh? Why, what do you mean? Uh, nothing, nothing. Go on, get the food. And hurry back. But the old guy didn't hurry back. He didn't come back that day at all. I didn't dare leave the house to look for him. All that day and all that night, squad cars kept racing up and down the block. Yeah, the white part on that map was getting smaller all the time. 
The funny thing, what scared me most, what just about drove me nuts, was thinking about Whitey looking for me. And all through that second day and the third night, I, I I kept dozing off, and every time my eyes closed, I heard that voice. Days you will be killed by a man with white hair. Uh, no. Within three days you will be killed by a man with white hair. Oh, uh, please, please leave me alone, please. Within three days you will be killed by a man with white hair. Oh, uh, uh, please, please, please. Uh, 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 oh. Only dream. Only a dream. It was night again. I lay back and started drifting off to sleep again. Then I heard someone coming into the house. I sprang to my feet. It wasn't a cop, it was someone else. I couldn't see nothing in the dark. Maybe it was the old guy. Hey, Pop, is that you? Pop, answer me. Is that you, Pop? Hard man to find. Whitey, I spun around and started running for the stairs. I was on the fourth floor. Whitey was coming up the steps behind me. I ran down the hall. I saw an open door and I ran inside and slammed the door shut after me. I tried to find the lock for the door, but there wasn't any. And I ran to the window, four stories down the sidewalk. And I heard Whitey outside the door. What was I going to do? door was opening. I couldn't stand it. Just waiting for him to kill me. I, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't... Ah! Yeah, that's it, Inspector. I guess I went nuts. The swan dive of the street looked better to me than my pal, Whitey. Yeah. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we caught Whitey when he's trying to leave that house. Too bad you never met him. You might not have jumped through the window. What do you mean? I don't think he'd have scared you half so much. If you'd have known his hair was black. What? You've seen a hundred guys like him, living their lives in gin mills and pool halls, never getting any sunshine, their skin as white as a shark's belly. Yeah, that's why they called him Whitey. He was just a pasty-faced punk. How do you like that? The old dame with the cards was wrong from the word go. Me gonna be killed by a guy with white hair. <laughs> you think she'll be sore when she hears I killed myself? Huh? No, no, come here. What is it? Uh, oh, he's dead. Poor little guy. Went nuts one night about a month ago over a poker game and ruined his life. He must have gone through a terrible ordeal since then. Certainly doesn't look like the newspaper pictures, does it? Look at him. Why, his hair's turned white as snow. <laughs> Venture tonight's performance in the Mystery Playhouse has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.